Hello, everybody. We should be live. Bye. It always lags a bit, but that's all right. Hello. We are here <laughs> to talk about this lovely book. <laughs> Those reviews did not prepare me for this. <laughs> no, I mean, that's all I can say. <laughs> Her books are so pretty, but now oh my God. I have so many of them, and know. they're like all so sneaking pretty. They're so pretty. Yeah. They're gorgeous. But I'm like, are they all as crazy as this book? I don't know. I mean, that's <laughs> fun. Like this experience reminded me of the Bertra Small experience. So we're mm. just along for the ride. <laughs> Because that book was crazy. Um, but to let people have a chance to join, we'll go ahead and introduce ourselves and chat about what we are currently reading. So Tiffany, who finally has a YouTube channel, is here. Woo! Yes! <laughs> Hi, I'm Tiffany. I go by TikTok pages, finally, here on YouTube and Neverland Pixie on Instagram. Right now, I am reading Still Beating by Jennifer Hartman. And uh, yeah, I'm enjoying it, but that's kind of odd to say because it's very dark and they're being made to do some harrowing things. So, but it's good. It's so good. Cool. Uh, my turn. <laughs> <laughs> I think my computer is lagging. Okay, so I'm Samantha from Books with Samantha. Uh, what am I reading? I forget the author name. It's an Omega Verse book on Kindle Unlimited. It's called Cutting the Braid by Jet Matterson. It's a male male Omega Verse, and it's really good. I'm liking it a lot. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Christy. Hey, okay, and I'm Christy. I'm Christy reads a lot on Instagram, and right now I'm in the middle of reading um, Throne of Glass, so I'm on book four. Is this a first time or a reread? Uh, first time. Oh. I have yeah. to join you. I got to read it too. Yes. <laughs> I've only read the first book of that series. So. Oh, okay. It mm -hmm. gets way piece. better. Does it? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But it's like a commitment. There's what, seven? There, yeah. Six? Mm -hmm. Seven. Yeah, there's seven. There's seven. Time for that. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I just want to say, like, if you didn't read the book, it's still six. This is going to be a very fun conversation. Because um, I know <laughs> Carrie didn't get to the book, uh, and she's here. So, and I know, Carrie, you just said you didn't read, but, you know, <laughs> just listen about what this book is about, and you're going to have a very fun time. <laughs> yeah, don't feel bad that you guys didn't read it. I didn't read it either. <laughs> I feel like that high school kid that is, like, showing up and feels like they could have read like the paper notes version, the sparks notes version of the book and feel like they could ace the test, but it's not happen. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I had an endometrial flare up and I didn't finish the book either. So I'm here for the ride, just like you guys. It was a I ride. Know, I don't think anybody's read it. I, I will apologize. I'm sorry. We didn't realize how hard it was to access this. Um, our next two, three, are pretty accessible so we'll make sure we check about like audiobooks and stuff next time yeah we picked this book like randomly because we really we really like the cover and i think we didn't realize that it wasn't like on audio so we're sorry in Alaska. i know it's so rare yeah. to find in regency london so i think that's why like we were super excited yes um I'm currently reading the Mafia Mistress and it's amazing. So I'm loving it. I forget what the I love that one. Is. Yeah, Chrissy, you read both, right? Back to Mila Finelli or something. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's a lot of fun. It's she gets betrothed to someone and then it's her romance with his dad. So Ooh. okay, hold on. Let me just add that. <laughs> it's like Dance I'm reading Italy, which is nice. the point of view as the dad, and I'm like, whoa, what? That's the dad. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm here for that. Yes. I love that. I need more mafia romances because I don't like mafia romances. Oh, at God, all. You that. No, I I haven't found a single one that I like. Which is so sad. Yeah. I love them. And I feel like they really go together with like historical romance fans because I feel like they have a yeah. lot of similar tropes and like vibes. And so I, I just love them. I definitely agree. Yeah. We just have to find you the right one. I mean, right. there's a I lot know. of marriage of convenience. I mean, you we got to find you the right one. <laughs> <laughs> they love how you annotated your book, Tiffany. Oh, 
Well, of because of our hero. Uh, <laughs> I missed that. I missed speaking that. of trope, every trope <laughs> up in here. So yeah, <laughs> thank you. I love these tabs. They're like my favorite because they're transparent. So you can still see like the writing underneath. Just goes. Do you have a specific color for a specific thing or is it just random? Yeah, I have like, I like to do a key so that I know. And depending upon the book, like I have something for the hero and the hero and the plot. Like I'm reading Crescent City right now. So my plot tabs are almost out. <laughs> um, but yeah, <laughs> a lot of details on Bible thin pages. But um, yeah, so I like do a key and it's different for every book. I love that. I wish I was a annotator, but I'm not. Same. I'm a tabber. Now, you okay. know, I annotated through, for this yeah. book for discussion, uh, but I, I mean, I can tab, but if I have to like stop and think and write, I'm like, mm. what my so brain is just, yeah. <laughs> for rereads, for rereads, definitely. Oh yeah, okay. for rereads, I'll definitely annotate a book. For mm -hmm. sure. Those of you who read it, what did you rate this book? I rated this book a three. Now it's a three because I was thoroughly entertained. Um, I really loved how Chase the Hero was the embodiment of every stereotype of a woman. He was overly emotional. He jumped to conclusions. He gave me whiplash. One minute he was angry. One minute he was ready to forget to get into some steam. And um, it was like that up until the end. There was every trope you could think of, which it just made me laugh. It was absolutely hilarious. And I did like the fact that the heroine was counter to him and that she's the one that has this profession. You know, she's driven. She's a journalist. She's not willing to give that up. She's not willing to take no for an answer. So I liked that role reversal between them. And I just found it hilarious. Um, although he was upsetting at times and I was like, come on Chase. Like I, I really need you to push into this art. Um, but I just like, I just laughed at him the entire time. So I rated it a three for enjoyment. Like I, I enjoyed the ride. I kept DM, sending Christy like this, what? And it just kept happening. I mean, things just kept happening. So I had a good reading experience. Um, it's not my favorite, but I had fun. So it's a three for me. <laughs> Go ahead, Christy. Um, and then I gave it, I can't decide. So like I read it last week and I'm still like undecided. And I think it's like 2.5 or three, just because it was super entertaining and like over the top in every way. And yeah, Tiffany and I were reading it at the same time. So we were just like, what is going on with this guy right now? <laughs> but yeah, it's probably more 2.5. I think the miscommunication yeah. had me wanting to go below three because I'm just like, literally, if you just sat and talked to each other, we could have cut out half of this book because mm -hmm. there were so many points where he was like, oh, I knew it and storms off. And she's like, oh, he's being annoying. I'm not going to fix what whatever problem he has. And I'm just like, how many times is going to think that you're cheating on him? How many times? Right. <laughs> and I love that she was like that. She's like, I'm not fixing this. This is your problem. And I'm like, right. yes, Maggie. <laughs> Like, and she even says, and I'm like, well, tell him this, like, but it takes forever her, for her to say, like, you didn't let me speak. So right. that's oh. your fault that you're upset. And I'm like, thank you. Where was this at 30%? Oh my God. <laughs> and then but that's that's cool. cool because usually it's like an insufferable heroine instead of the oh, no. insufferable hero. Oh no. Chase was insufferable, manhandling before her before chapter three. I remember noting that I was like, okay, we're in the 90s now. Because it was <laughs> the minute they met, he's like, get in bed and take off your top. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh my God. When she says no, and she says stop, and he's like, I can't help myself. And I'm just like, yeah. Oh. And then she my melts into his arms. I was like, girl. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say about this book with that, with the manhandling, there is a part in here that I like tabbed that I thought was poignant because Bell, the woman, like when they finally get to Skagway that he like has to work for because all of their loot is stolen. She forced herself on him. Like she like smacks his hand away and like lunges at him. So I was like, at least mm -hmm. with Connie Mason, it's across the board. And it feels like this is of the times, no matter how inappropriate, everybody is acting in this way. So I liked that she put that in there. It wasn't just the men. Let's not get started on Scott the Mountie. 
But um, <sighs> he was a piece of work. <laughs> I feel bad for him though. And he what? Her, and then he was like, Jess, he needed to sit down somewhere and fall back. Yes. I mean, yes. how many times do you need to hear no? And what bothered me about him is that he only liked her. This is okay. Chase was really dramatic, but the difference between Scott the Mountie and Chase is that Chase liked her for who she was. And Scott the Mountie only wanted her for his own ego and to assuage his own desires. Like she reports that she saw his her attacker and he like forces himself on her. Like this isn't the time to get a kiss. This is the time to do your job as the Mountie. You know, right. he was just a lot for me. Um, but yeah, well, like everyone was falling scene, He proposes like 10 or 15 times, like in a row. And she's like, <laughs> dude, no, like go back to Canada, please. And get lost. Like, yeah, just tell him off. But then she'd be like, well, I really do love you. Like as a friend. And I'm like, tell him no and to go. <laughs> like, yeah. Let's stop. <laughs> consistently though i feel like the older historicals like in comparison to the new historicals are just more dramatic i feel like almost oh, yeah. every live show we always say oh this was so dramatic this was like a telenovela like we're i feel like the writing was just more extra i feel like this was just like an old western soap opera like it was so over the top and like she almost dies like five times and like miraculously gets saved. There's people chasing after them, trying to tell her about them. the amnesia. Keep going, oh, Jess. Yeah. Keep going. Keep oh going. There was like and an accidental pregnancy. And that Andy was, like, yes. <laughs> there's a hundred pages left, and I'm like, what can happen? I amnesia, of course. Why didn't I think of that? And I'm just like, so we have miscommunication, amnesia, surprise pregnancy. Um, what else? What other tropes did we have, Tiffany? Steam that comes out of nowhere. The first time that let, let, let's talk about the first time that they're together. The steam <laughs> comes out of nowhere. And before, you know, she's still flushed and he's like calling her a B word and cold hearted because he's jumping to a conclusion. And that's like the trend. Like he would jump to a conclusion, get angry, come back and initiate steam, which means, you know, just make it happen. And that happened over and over and over and over and over. 15 times in just the book on page and i'm like another another one but <laughs> like, the amnesia took me out i was like amnesia <laughs> with an accidental pregnancy oh my god yeah Wait, who had the, the amnesia off. the heroine the yeah heroine. Mm -hmm. yeah they As she Montana. was thinking she was pregnant after no she, she already had the baby yeah <laughs> and we have <laughs> another woman another woman using that yeah yeah, yeah. other woman drama <laughs> got the mounty drama like yeah. Yeah. There was a bear. They got jumped in the alleyway. Like their money yeah. was stolen. Like every single thing. Like yeah. it was a hot mess. Yeah. He's yeah. got a saloon woman that wants him. Mm -hmm. You know who's this? You know too good. Maggie with a career. I got that. Yeah. You know. I was like, oh, just yeah. it was a lot. And they're dealing with, I did like, and they're dealing with like, it's almost, and it's a road trip romance as well, because she's trying to go to the Klondike to report on the gold rush. And because she's a woman, like in the beginning, she has to kind of be coy and manipulative to get the funding to go. And no one will take a woman to the Klondike. And so like, she runs into him in the beginning because I guess like what, like the, the authorities are after him. And so, you know, she's trying to like convince him to take her to the Klondike. Uh, when she ends up in Skagway. And it's just all about if he's going to take her, you know, who's going to take her. She's yeah. busting a case wide open in Skagway about a local, like, gang leader. I mean, it's a lot. Uh, Which, all oh, that's a true story. <laughs> yeah. I didn't read the whole I didn't thing. even read that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? Like, Once I was yeah. done, I was exhausted. I didn't read the author's note either, Christy. <laughs> I didn't read that either. No, I just knew that guy was real from like history up here yeah and they oh you did mm -hmm. that's cool yeah well and yeah like the hero in the beginning because he's a murderer like he killed um he was trying to take cattle up to um alaska and canada for like beef and stuff for the um gold rush guys and he murdered somebody like along the way because they're trying to steal his cat cattle and like that's when he meets her and was like you have to hide me in your room so like the bad guys are after him or not the bad guys he i guess is a bad guy <laughs> mm -hmm. i wonder if a lot of her 
books have some inspiration of history because like I just read like these two author notes for her other books and it's the same. It's inspired by an actual mm -hmm. like character. Well, like creative cool. liberty is definitely taken, right. but it sounds like maybe she's like a history buff. I don't know. I mean a lot of I feel like a lot of historical romance authors are. Yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah. But I I was so mad because I was reading and I messaged Christy and I was like, why are so many animals dying in this book? Oh my gosh. Yeah. They constantly talked about how many animals died trying to take people to wherever they're trying to go. And then all the dogs, he's like, oh, well, there was an, oh, there was an avalanche too that almost killed mm -hmm, her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And she got buried and he had to save her. And he's like, oh, but I knew the dogs. I couldn't save them. And I'm like, so this entire team of sled dogs died. And then... They were talking about all these horses would get stuck. So mm -hmm. whenever they would pass them, Chase would kill them to put them out of their misery because everybody just wouldn't care. And I'm just like, is this like actually happened? Like all these people just did not care about their animals. And why am I reading about it? Yeah, yeah. it was that journey was rough. But. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but just like another animal died. And I'm just oh, and I oh, but at least her horse didn't. When she got amnesia, I was like, what is the horse like dead in the ditch with her too? Right. Yeah. No. But it made it back to the farm. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <sighs> but the other the um what was that girl's name virgie or something who was mm -hmm. there at the ranch at the end like that girl was over the top and then she ends up with the mountie oh. guy and i was like seriously you're gonna you're gonna stick with this girl <laughs> like, they deserve each other he says that she I would did. be a wife he could be proud of i was like yeah because that's all about her i was like y'all right. belong together because virgie was going to great lengths i'm like she's not even like in love with Chase. He was just like a status symbol or whatever. She was acting like they were married. Okay. Yeah. It was a little, it was very fatal attraction. It was very fatal attraction. And she's only 18. Which yeah. yeah, she's really young. <laughs> yeah. Constantly trying to seduce him. Mm -hmm. But he was kind of stringing her along because he was like, well, yes, he was. Let's see if we can get married. And I'm like, well, obviously she's going to be obsessed with you now. Right. Like how uh what what do you I don't even remember our main character's name. Maggie. Maggie, Maggie thank you. How Maggie was stringing along that other guy. It's just like you just yeah. need to be straight up with them and say no and they'll leave you alone. But mm -hmm. but they want to keep but, their options and, open. Exactly. <laughs> and you know, Maggie needed that help. So I was like, you know what, you're mincing words, but mm -hmm. I see you and Chase ain't coming around, so you might need a little help here. Let's just but he, oh no, Scott bothered me. I could not stand Scott. <laughs> I could not do it. Like she's telling him when they're in the cabin and she's nursing a dying man to his, his end days. He's like, you know, trying to freaking force himself on her. And of course, Jace walks in and that just fuels his assumption <laughs> that she wanted it. You wanted it. So, yeah. and, I'm like, and then to like, what? Not even a chapter later, he wants it too. I'm just like, this is getting... <laughs> Yeah. Like he could have seen Maggie walking down this, like delivering mail to like the post office, and he'd be like, You married that guy? Like, what? <laughs> like, any guy he saw her with, he just like jumps to a conclusion. Yes. Oh my. But it was always like the convenient timing. So I feel like there were four right. different times he walks in conveniently on her with Scott. Mm -hmm. And like, even at the end, when it was like their wedding, because then they get married, and he's like, But you were hugging Scott, and I just knew it, you loved him. And so he, then he ran away. Yeah. After like, they on the wedding day, we haven't even had cake yet. <laughs> I was like, please. <laughs> well, because he tells Virgie, like, or some, he tells Virgie to pass yes. the note to like Maggie. And I'm like, why are you trusting this girl? She just <laughs> she got your like fiance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she led to the <laughs> enemy <laughs> and like <laughs> hilarious. He sounds like a Judith McNaught hero. I will just say, like, whatever horrible <laughs> Judith McNaught book we read, he sounds like that hero. I mean, he had his moments, though. I mean, he didn't jump her after she was recovering with the avalanche, which made me feel like, okay, Chase, you're not Scott, you know. Oh, but decent. Yeah, I was like, you're being decent. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> stripping for crumbs. I'm like, this is so romantic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's so funny. It was nuts, but I'm I'm sure she did a lot of research about what it was like during that time period. So I'm assuming it was like semi accurate of how like crazy it was of people 
traveling to get to the gold and then i was like is this really how it was where anybody could just like claim anywhere they wanted and if like someone was sick and died it's just like hey this is free i'm gonna take it i'm just like what a mess and yeah like, then yep and all of that messaging she had to deal with too like about i just love I, I didn't love it but it was like this is so like noted of the times because the women would ask her that too like what are you doing out here you should be at home taking care of your men why are you here? Or like, if you're not working in the saloons, why are you out here? Like just that right. whole like mindset was so pre like prevalent. Yeah. It was, she just, she just kept getting, so I, I liked that she was like, I'm going to the Klondike. I don't care how, you know, how dangerous it is. I'm gonna like, you know, expose what's going on in this town. I didn't like how like loud she was about it though. I'm like, you don't announce to him that you're gonna expose him. Yeah. Right with Soapy, I'm like okay. Yeah. After like, she already knew some up. of the things he did, like yeah, don't tell him to his face. Like, I was like, like where's the cat? There. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was like, okay, that was a choice, but <laughs> it was tough times. <laughs> we also got snowed in. I mean, it's just like one yeah. thing after the other mm -hmm. after. There's well, a yeah, at least goes with the cover. Yeah. Mm, yeah. But I feel like the 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 barn fire was very strange. Like, did someone set that? Like, what was the purpose of that? Because then the horses died too, of course. It's just like okay. I, I thought Virgie set that. That's I what I thought, but they never addressed yeah. it again. Did they? I think she did. I thought they did a little bit. Oh, okay. Maybe I missed it. That they referenced. But then why would she have I know she's trying to sabotage the relationship, but right. She could have just threw her in a ditch, and then you know that was. I think that was only there so she could get the amnesia. But I didn't understand why are you burning down what you're trying to like inherit through Chase? Right. That made no oh, sense. Yeah. Wouldn't you want the house, girl? See, I need these people to think, and so I just, <laughs> I just thought she was like a petulant child. Um, yeah, and it didn't like things were just happening to happen at that point. I was like, okay, what else? And I sometimes like, because I know people don't love romance as a span like years. And like, I like them sometimes, but not when it's themselves sabotaging the romance. <laughs> and then I'm like, you're just being annoying and all of this could have been avoided. Right. He really sabotage the romance time and time again with his failure to communicate and jumping to conclusions. And that was literally why they spent like years apart. And right. it's just interesting with the time period, how like, they literally got stuck in Alaska because you can't travel when it got too cold. So you're like stuck uh -huh. there for the whole winter until you could come home in the spring. And I was like, that's just an interesting like setting choice and how it affects a relationship. I do not out. like books that span any t a year, less than a year. Whenever I see like <laughs> five years later, six months later, and it's not an epilogue, I want to throw the book across the room. I just <laughs> don't frustrated i'm like they spent five years apart where was that i don't like no i don't like that well this one was like three years yeah oh, okay no and like it that. wasn't life that kept them apart it was chase and maggie and everybody else <laughs> like, yeah and the well, terrain all, and yeah the pregnancy was interesting because she kept on making a big deal about I'm not showing, like it's super small. And I was like, why are you obsessed with this? But it's like, oh, of course, cause Chase is gonna show up, think you're seven months pregnant instead of nine months pregnant and jump to conclusions about who the baby's father <laughs> is. And I'm just right. like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, and, oh, and then there was in the beginning. Exactly, about exactly, that's Aaron, the miscommunication. Aaron. Yeah. Yeah. Cause she wanted him to love her and want her not for right. children, but for yeah. her. And so even at 50%, which I'm guessing because, you know, I'm so used to being in an ebook or an audiobook, at like halfway through the book, they finally do declarations of love and like she's still holding on to that. And I was like, girl, you're not gonna <laughs> say anything. But um, yeah, so that was a big thing of miscommunication. So then when she comes out and tells him that she can, he's like, so either she tells the truth and she's lying or she, <laughs> Or he doesn't believe her because you already yeah. know this. <laughs> um, I have a quote for Tori because mm -hmm. they mentioned this multiple times in the book. Um, and it says, like, we're alone and there's plenty of ice outside our window and rapture to be found in our bed. That is where ice and rapture comes from. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? 
Oh my god. And he mentions it like earlier on too when they were first in Alaska yeah. together, I think, like how that's how he feels when he's with her and stuff and yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he is icy. And it was that's the thing. We would get the ice, okay, with his antics and then straight rapture. No communication in between. Okay, Steam would just come out of nowhere. They'd be talking and he'd be like, woman, you know, and I'm like, whoa, what is going on here? And then, you know, he's like, oh, you're a virgin. I just, you know, I'm like, <sighs> that first Steam was a lot. I was like, okay. I do well, think they got together. Because there's a fire like version of it, not the same characters, but she had like a theme going on with like ice and fire. Oh, wow. I'm exhausted. I don't know if I can do it <sighs> after <laughs> that. Now I'm like, I have so many Connie Mason books. Like, do I try another one? <laughs> you should. I did hear this one was one? wild for her. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. That's what I saw, like, on um, Goodreads, okay. like, in the comments. I saw people say this one was, like, out there for her, like, a different vibe, which, I don't know. <laughs> I want to read any of her books, because I didn't technically read this one, but <laughs> because you know how there's always, like, animals in historical romance? There's, like, a bunny, or there's, like, a horse in the background? She has several where there's kangaroos in the background. And I'm like, why is there so many kangaroos in Are her they book? Australian? I yeah, think so. I, I think she's an Australian author, author, isn't she? I think she's Australian. Is she? Yeah, I believe she is. And she has books that um, take place in Australia. And oh, is there anything in their pouches? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I've never read any book is set in Australia, so I want to read those at least. There's no about the author in my book. I know, me either. Uh, let's oh, go it on the back. Aw, someone who owned this was marking off the ones that they had read by oh. her. Aww. Oh, that is so oh, that is said she was in Florida, so I don't know, but I could have swore she was an Australian author. The Bold Land, Wild Land, Brave Land series is her Australian trilogy. Hmm. Ooh, and the first one, she's a female convict. What'd she now, do? She lived in Florida. Yeah. But I guess she lived abroad in like Europe and Asia and wrote for like travel blogs. So maybe that's why. Oh, that's cool. That makes sense. Because it definitely feels like a road trip romance. Like you really do get the landscape. Even like when uh, she's first kidnapped and like getting away and the raft and the cold and like all of that. I really, like, I did like that. Yeah. Oh. But it's I interesting because she says she was featured on a segment called 48 Hours, which was a CBS television production that devoted an hour long program just to the romance industry. I was like, I've never heard of that before. I've never heard oh. of that document doc uh document what are they called documentary <laughs> thank you you at the beginning i got it <laughs> my brain wouldn't let me finish the rest interesting like is she i think tori asked in her live show she's like is connie mason still alive is she still writing no hmm. she's passed away one of the first oh. things that popped up was her obit obituary i can't hmm. talk today apparently <laughs> how old was she when she passed um, let's see. So Joanna Lindsay only passed recently ish. Oh, 84. She was 84. Um, oh, she yeah. must have been older though when then she was writing these. Yeah. She was born in 1937. Oh. So yeah. Yeah. So she was like mid-50s when this was uh when this book was published. Is a different yeah, Mine says 2019, the year she passed away. Unless I'm looking at a different. Very recent. But no, she's not alive. But she's written. She's written a bunch of books. Like her backlist is really intense. And she was storyteller of the year in 1990 by Romantic Times. I wish Romantic Times was still a thing with like their. <laughs> um magazine they pub like i would subscribe to that and like read that every month like that i want month. some i want to get my hands on it i have like an alert for ebay and they're never on there <sighs> yeah they're not so it says connie passed away in 2020 at the age of 89 oh <clears throat> 
Yeah, oh, so that's so very proud. recent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So she, I don't think she was Australian. I think she was American, but I think she traveled. And right. maybe that's all her books. Because none of her books are set in, like, Regency London. They're all set in very, like, Australia, Alaska. Ooh. Is this what you were talking about, the CBS News show? I don't know. There's a YouTube link on her website. Oh, it says it was like an hour documentary just about the romance industry. Oh, no, this is five minutes. It was called 48 Hours. Yeah, I think this is a like an ad for it. Oh, my gosh, her computer. Get rid of this ad. Let me show you real quick. That's her computer. Do you see that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh, that's so funny. I mean, Lorraine Heath talked to us about having to type on a typewriter and then getting a computer. But now I feel like people get typewriters for, like, the aesthetic. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. Right. I'm going to have to find this. That is so cool. I know. So, I want to yeah. watch. Oh, yeah. It says right here on the on the book, Storyteller of the Year, Romantic Times. Yeah. Mine has nothing this. written on the front. I know. Do you have the, oh, uh, like... It's on the inside. It's on the inside. Oh. No, it's on the front and like this pink writing. Mm -hmm. uh, mine doesn't have the pink writing, but it oh. has like the raised lettering. Yeah, mine, mine has the lettering too. Yeah. Oh. Well, excuse oh, me. Me and Tiffany's are the same. <laughs> I know. That's so I interesting. Thought... This says it's a first edition. Is it not? Um... We need to make Read these blurbs because now I'm gonna side eye them. <laughs> Connie Mason has done it again. <laughs> <laughs> Connie Mason at her best. She draws readers into this fast-paced, tender, and emotional historical romance that proves that love really does conquer all. I mean, you could read it that way. <laughs> I think this is the most accurate. A grand and glorious adventure romp. Yeah, that's what it was. Okay? This was, yeah. This was like an adventure romp. And they got together like a lot. Like it was very yeah. intense. Like. <laughs> I have more than 10 pink tabs on here. Of course, that's mm -hmm. the color. Yeah. I am annoyed though, because like, who can read that? With a hot pink font <laughs> on like a light blue background. <laughs> Ours yeah, is white. Yeah, ours is white, so we can read it. Okay. <laughs> Mine is pink and ripped. Poor thing. <laughs> Choices were made with that. I'm just like, mm. ew. Did I tab the breast milk? Let's see. Oh, oh we yeah, didn't even God. talk about it. We didn't no. even talk about it. So, like, after they're reunited, after she has the baby. There's a steamy scene, and he like drinks her breast milk, and he's like, "Oh, that tastes so sweet." And I'm just like, "This is so disgusting," and not. I've read that I a couple will. times in historical romances. I like Lisa Clayton is like that. Yeah, Have you? That is not the first time I've read that in a historical romance mm -hmm. or a romance in general, because Jessica Kane has one like that too. Yeah. No. So no. I no. that's not the first time I've heard that. I don't need to read that. <laughs> And he's Connie laughing at that too. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then he like talks about how like at one point how he's just like jealous of the baby, and I'm like, this is just weird. <laughs> like I get it for the time; it could be empowering for women reading that, you know, who are oh, that's true. Receiving. Yeah, so what I can about see that, that, like embracing it and making it for them. But yeah, yeah, it's a bit kinky. <laughs> I won't understand. I mean, do what you want, but like, mm, no. But I didn't think about like the time period, how having like a breastfeeding mom, right? She breastfeeds like around other people and, right. Yeah. Very true. <laughs> <laughs> we can a lactation. <laughs> Lisa Clayton yep. says, too, like, come on. Well, like, I didn't realize, like, when I think of these historical romance authors, I think, of, like, Joanna Lindsay was pretty young when she started writing, and, like, Lisa Kleypas and Julia Quinn was very young when she started writing. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. looking at Julia Quinn's author photo in Splendid, she's just, like, a little baby. Like, she's younger like, than yeah. I am in that photo. Yeah. And it's just, like, and I know Lisa Kleypas was very young when she started writing. Wasn't she, like, 21? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I think she was 21, 22 when it actually got published mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, I know very, I'm always like, younger than me, achieving great things. Good for them. <laughs> right. I'm like, what am I doing over here? <laughs> hey, you're doing big things. Okay. <laughs> you're just on a different path, <laughs> right? but a great one. <laughs> <laughs> it's also interesting that um i think they were talking about it because tori did uh like uh productivity sprints today about like mm -hmm. books having audiobooks and how they are like who they're choosing of the older romances to make audiobooks for because like uh -huh. i don't think connie mason has a lot of audiobooks but like you can get a lot of uh lisa claypus's early stuff on audio and i think like julie Julia Quinn, you can get a lot of her 90s stuff. I'm pretty sure Joanna Lindsay probably has a lot. So I wonder if they'll ever like go back and do it or well, not. Well, it seems like they are lately because yeah. the um the Bertrice small one, like I listened to that on audio and I think it was a newer audio that really? they're doing her books. And I listened to um the one for next oh, month, Jude Devereaux, and hers was on audio. Was it? Yep. Interesting. But like it sounds like Connie Mason was like a rock star in the 90s. So I love that for her. <laughs> I know. Like literally romantic times everywhere about her. So it would have been so cool when like historical romance bodice rippers were thriving. Like bring that back. Bring oh those back. Not like gosh. sweet historicals like Tessa Dare, we all love, but those are just like super fun and fluffy. Like right. give right. me these crazy nuts plots back. Even though yeah. the and I don't know plots, how. Like, we ended up in the era of illustrated covers with historical romance. Like, yeah. I just don't know what I'm getting with them. I don't, there, there have been, and that's just not the norm. There have been a few that I've liked, but for the majority, like, I don't know what I'm getting. So I, I just can't call it. That would be my back to the future moment. I'm going back to get the freaking cover. Okay. <laughs> oh, I would be snatching covers left and right. Right. I have a palace. I'd be biff with my romance covers. You have to go through me if you need them. Yeah, <laughs> I know. If people knew the money they were sitting on with like the Lisa Clippis Where Passions Leads. I still regret because I went to that that estate sale where I mm -hmm. found Where Passions Leads. I like I should have just literally bought every book there and like just given them to friends or like posted yes. them for sale somewhere because I left so many and Teresa came too and bought like I bought like two huge boxes she bought a huge box and it's like there's still so many there because I had a lot of if stuff I see there. any Beverly Jenkins or Lisa Kleypas like classic cover I will buy it even if I already have it that's my toxic trait <laughs> like, they're all sitting at my house or like when you saw didn't you go back and get the rest of the Beverly Jenkins or no yes yeah, so, okay so I yeah. saw Beverly Jenkins at like a Goodwill type store it's yeah, it's a thrift store basically. And there were every single book that she published was there in the original cover. So I was like, oh my God, like how amazing it would be for other people to find this because I have them. So I only grabbed like maybe two or three because I really imagined like a young romance reader like stumbling upon this pot of gold. And then I was like, screw them. And I went <laughs> back and I grabbed all of them. <laughs> yeah. Well, because like I, I need to protect them. them. Like, <laughs> I need right. to take him off the yeah. shelves because <laughs> we were two dollars. I was like, you guys don't even yeah. know what you're sitting on. Like, you're not appreciating oh my it. Gosh, the fact bucks. that you found all of them. Like, I never find her books. And yeah, stores. yeah, it was great. It was peak peak bookstore shopping. I have FOMO. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining myself doing that one arm clear out, you know? Yeah. That's like my <laughs> moment. I literally <laughs> cried because I found Indigo. And that was the first time I had seen it in like store. Well, now I have this one too. I literally started crying. And anyone that happened, these poor people that happened to walk down like the aisle that I was in, what I was like, have you read one? Beverly Jenkins? Right? Are you a romance reader? No, you need to read her. Like I was putting her books in people's carts. Like, yeah. <laughs> These poor people. You had that moment that I want, like, I'll take the shelf, please. I just want to be able to say that. I just want to have that moment to where, like, everything in there is good. Because I really have to glean here in Vegas. And I can just say, I want the shelf. I'll take the cake. You know what I mean? And it's only, like, 50 bucks. Oh, <laughs> I can't wait. Yeah, It's going to happen one day. When I found, though, Where Passions Lead, 
in someone's house for a dollar like my heart started racing my palms started sweating and I'm like oh my god is this like actually real life like is this real life it's like those commercials, like those old Navy commercials when they're having a sale and the woman runs out and they're like, start the car. <laughs> like, <laughs> from us. So yeah. Funny. I still can't believe I found that. This is a good question though. So like for audiobooks, how do they decide like if they're not, a, is it their estate? Well, I don't even, I think estate. some of them don't even own rights to it. Like because audio wasn't a thing for a lot of them. Yeah. So I was listening to like um, a Faded Mates podcast episode, I think. And they were talking about how like ebooks and audio weren't even a thing yet. So like if authors signed contracts and didn't put it in there, like any future format for like me to own, they don't own rights to that stuff anymore. Like a lot of them, some of them do. It's in their contracts. Because yeah. Because those formats weren't even a thing. Like they, they wouldn't, wouldn't have, have thought. known they would be a thing yeah. though. So a lot of but they even said anything. like some authors, that's why they're some authors write under so many pen names because they lost the right to right. even their pen name. Like they did not own the rights to their books. So right. I imagine that it, it, unless they had a really good contract, it's their estate or I imagine it's just the publishing house. Yeah. Because that's interesting when you start thinking about bringing, you know, older historicals onto the screen. If the rights are up for grabs, then we could potentially be having a ton of adaptations. Now my brain is going off because I'm like, well, can we can we make these? Because right. I, I would love to see that. It's also sad though that they don't have yeah. the right to their yeah, own. Exactly. Because like, if they're how... adapted, yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say if they're adapted and the author doesn't own it, like they're making nothing off of that. Right. <sighs> I feel like a lot of those classic older historical authors that paved the way for the community really got robbed in the amount that oh, they yeah. were getting. Like in comparison, like authors now have something to compare it to versus those authors were just like happy to be signed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, they were making money. I'm sure they were making some money, but I feel like they got robbed. Yeah. Uh, Joanna Lindsay was probably rolling in the money. Oh. But yeah, my thought is For like sure. Joanna Lindsay was so iconic and like Fabio so iconic. I'm surprised the Bridgerton series is the first one to really be adapted mm -hmm. from historical romances from that time period. I, I mean, I love constantly. I think about that constantly. I'm like, why yeah. Bridgerton? I love Bridgerton, but I'm like, why? Right, right. There's so the many. Not the, it's not the best. Yeah. Just screen so well, but so I wonder if someone like read it and was like, this would be great. But it's like, who, who, what else were you reading? That was like, yeah. What I think it was, I think it Exactly. When? Yeah. Where? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I'm like, where? Give me the details. When did they talk about like how they picked the project? Because I often oh. wonder what made Shondaland. I think of some intern. Like I read. Yeah. I'm a reader, and like, or I'll read books that, and they need. I'm trying to push more romance and stuff, but it's usually like, thrillers or like mysteries and stuff. So like, I would like to know like who? Yeah, who was the one that brought that to Shonda's like eyeballs? It was before season one. They talked about it, and I can't. I thought it was like that. I can't remember if he's like a director or producer that like Chris dude. I yeah. don't remember his name. Okay. But I think Chris he Vaughn talked about it. Right? Yeah, yeah. He talked about it with somebody and I think they found it because somebody, which I don't think it was Shonda or him, but like somebody in their team or whatever read it, loved it, and brought it to them. It was like this would be a great show. Or just like read the books. And then they were like, hmm, I this think could be that's a good show. fair. I mean, in life, it's more so about who you know. I think it it's not necessarily because Bridgerton is great. I love Bridgerton, but I feel like it's more so like sh there was connections that brought it there because there's so many romance books where you'll see the rights are bought for the book. Like Beverly Jenkins, mm -hmm. how many times yeah. have the rights for her books been so bought for production and nothing ever happens to them. So you just right. need to be like the right people. Yeah. Well, that's what happened with um, the Outlander series as well. Like the showrunner guy, his producing partner, and I believe the showrunner's wife, they both read the series and were like fangirling over it together. And then, um, the producing partner who read it brought it to him and they're like, hey, why don't we make this a show? Like, it's super cool. I just need to, like, marry someone at Netflix and tell them what to make. <laughs> so they like, the wives yeah. are, like, doing the reading and just saying, like, here, here's one, here's one. Make this a show, make this a show. I'm working on that meet cute, okay? Let's take this out the vault, baby. Because that's what they do. They buy the right so that no one else can make it so that Not they can right. make it if and when they want to make it. Right. Television. So, I mean, I'm I trying to have my own producer. Yes. I love that journey for you. Right? <laughs> I'll start working on it. We're it's working. fine. <laughs> yeah. 
all the romance readers. Samantha, you're in in California. You're better connected than me. So go out and uh, girl. <laughs> All right. You said like my brother, Tiffany, go drink coffee at this shop by the USD gym. I'm like, no. <laughs> my mom <laughs> literally does that all the time. I joke like my journey is to marry someone rich. And she's like, okay, like go to like Beverly Hills and work at the bank there and like meet someone rich. And I was like, oh my God. You got to put yourselves in the right place. Right. <laughs> But like, that's so true that it's probably yeah. someone was reading it and was like, this is amazing. Yeah. Here. And they gave it to the right person. And right. that's how they found it. I mean, and I'm assuming though, TikTok had something to do with this because it only became a movie like after it became super popular on TikTok. But we need more romance readers like in development within right. television. More Could just readers imagine? in general. Sitting at that table, the ideas would be great. Yeah. But it's just um, getting the books at the right time. Yeah. And, and in the right hands. hands. Yeah. If you guys could see one adaption of like your a romance book, it doesn't have to be historic romance. What would you guys want? I want the I want Victoria Rebels. What do you want? Victoria oh, you want Victoria Rebels. Mm, yeah. That that's would what be what I was cool. say. Or Indigo. Yeah. I want like an epic, like Pride and Prejudice 2006 version of indigo, of indigo. Ah, yes. yes they would make that don't say it again we'll talk they would make that they would make indigo i really think i think that they would make that people would want to watch that yeah yeah is that the one what of hers got the rights box there were two and one of them was night through song. the rip bodice night song night song okay but like nothing happened i feel like she announced it like two years ago that the rip yeah. bodice had helped buy rights for something Mm -hmm. Well, and one of her other rights, I think, for a series fell through, too. Yeah. Oh, was that uh, her not historical? No, it, it, it was. No, no, she, it, it was a sorry, historical, I, I thought. It was? Okay. It was. Yeah. It was the, oh, my God, what is it? The one with the three brothers. The Levesque series? Or the no. Destiny series? Destiny series. Destiny series. Ah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. my favorite. Yeah. Wait, so, Samantha, would you want this to be, like, a show or a movie? That's another question. If it was Indigo, I would want it to be a movie, just epic, sweeping, and beautiful. But if it's like a series, I would want an actual like Netflix adaption, just so we can get each character story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Bare what Knuckle Bastards. That would be a good series too. Yeah, I would like that one too. Mm -hmm. Jessica, Christy, do you have any that you would want to see and adapted? Um, I actually uh, talked about that with Lorraine Heath in my interview because, like, we brought up Bridgerton. We're like, historical romances, there's a market for them um, right. on TV. And so her Scoundrels of St. James series, mm -hmm. I think, would be a lot of fun. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Ooh, I would love that. Yeah. And it could lead to so many spinoffs with all the Because there's so many spinoff books. Yeah. Yep. Oh, that would be so great. You know, although some of the endings I didn't like, it would be cool to see um, Joanna Stoops' Uptown Girls on screen just the gilded like that would be sexy right the gilded, the gilded house. Kids, oh my like god the dark side yeah. too i feel like that would be really well on screen well especially with the gilded mm -hmm. age on hbo right now like it's yes. super popular and it's a really good show so like i feel like she's getting a lot more hype too so maybe her books would get picked up <laughs> i'm gonna get on work and be like i have some ideas and they're gonna yeah. be like stick to the scripts that we sent you we're not asking for all this but i'm give it to them <laughs> <laughs> Many, but like contemporary, YA, yeah. like. Books. And I don't count passion flicks because those uh, are a bit cringy. Yeah, you know, and not actually like. Oh, I would like to see Maiden Lane into a series as well. Oh yes, Christy, <gasps> Maiden Lane would be perfect. Yes, you're gonna love it, Jess. The only thing you're not gonna love, which well, I'm just assuming that you're like me. I didn't really enjoy the <laughs> inserts of like there's like random stories throughout for no. each. And there's like, I didn't like them. I was, the I just, fairy just like, tales? yeah, they're like fairy tales. No, I didn't like the inserts. And I'm no, like, but, but if, they're good. You have to finish. The and I love movie. them, but they're like in the middle of the series. I have to go back because the one, um, Dearest Rogue, I've read and Duke mm -hmm. of Desire. Yeah, I read like, no, the fairy tales are so good because they play into each story and like 
all of her series have do that except for her first series. So like it's kind of her thing. <laughs> I feel so bad because I like there was one time where I clocked him like, what does this have to do with overall romance? And I'm a very analytical person. So I was like sitting there and trying, I'm like, I can't do this. I got to skip over oh, these. No. Like, I have to focus <laughs> on the tech. But yeah. <laughs> do you guys feel like YA is kind of not as super popular as it used to be? Yeah, I think we're in an age yeah. of adult romance being like True. predominantly like uh, in the media. But I, I think that's because the romance readers who were reading YA and hyping it up are now older. So they've transitioned yeah. into adult romance. Because like so even when I first discovered BookTube with people like Haley or my brain is blinking, but they were all reading YA at that time. And now they're reading adult romance because they're older. So. So, I, but I wonder then if we'll see movies shift towards that because we had like Twilight, Divergent, Hunger Games, and all like Five Feet yeah. Apart, um, John Green, like all of his movies. And so it's just like, is that still like a heavy market or are they going to shift towards more adult romances now? Though they did say JLo's new movie is the comeback of the rom com. And I was like, no, it's not. <laughs> yeah. I am sorry, but it is not. <laughs> mm. Well, and yeah. I feel like times have changed too with people streaming nowadays and like the streaming services, you can go explicit, you can push all the boundaries and they're not trying to make it mainstream to like fit into the movie theater where you need like to keep it PG to like have the ticket sales. Yeah. So I feel like yeah. that has affected um, doing well, more they YA, after so. on Netflix. Right. After did really, really well. Right. Yeah, so did 365. And it was super contentious. So that also drummed up a lot of publicity. Because, like, I feel like if you don't read romance, like, okay, that, it was a lot. Okay. Was. But, like, I remember being in college and that was out. And people were like, I can't believe they made this. And I was like. I mean, that's what we read every day. Myself. Yeah, I was like, this isn't shocking, guys. You know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, that did really well because people were like. Scandalized. Yeah, this is, you know, this is Stockholm Syndrome. This is, I was like, please just enjoy it. We're in a fantastic right? world. Have you never read a kidnapping <laughs> romance before? Right? <laughs> this is nothing new. I so the rest if you want more. And I was like in film school too. And I was like, you know what? I think I was like, I'm with people that aren't used to being in the safe space of being a reader and being able to discuss these topics in a safe space because it's fantasy. Where like normally, you know, we're not able to go there because it's like kidnapping is wrong, you know, and that's wow. that. But it's fiction. Exactly. That's, that's what I was saying. My discussion section sucked because I was the only one on my campaign. But like, whatever. <laughs> I'm evolved because I read. They didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> but I do feel like we went through a phase where everything was talking about getting an adoption. Like around the time, like the kissing booth came on Netflix, like mm -hmm. all those movies were back to back. So maybe we, there is hope. Maybe things were just halted because of the pandemic. Right, right. Know. Well, those again are all YA because even like Jenny Han, now her summer, I turned pretty mm -hmm. serious being turned, and so that's so why. Yeah. But yeah, there isn't a market for adult romances because like Bridgerton, they made adult. I mean, the books yeah. are adult. But, like they made Bridgerton right. adult. Right. I think Bridgerton is definitely paving the way for series to potentially come and be romance series because yeah. that's what Bridgerton was, and it was like number one for like decades. It felt like, which made me so happy. I know. I I'm so excited for season two. <laughs> yeah. Same. What do you guys yeah. think about the choice of the reveal of Lady Whistledown early? I didn't like it. Yeah. yeah me, either. me either. But I I'm think wondering they maybe because... they weren't going to get as many seasons as they wanted. So they kind of did True. it early. True. I think but also, true. I didn't think about that. The yeah. books are out. So I was wondering, like, people are going to reveal it anyways through the books. So they might as well, mm -hmm. like, do it now. Control the narrative. Yeah. Because of the books. Yeah. And you cool. think about like on screen, like I was upset. I was like, I had to read to get this. I was so oh, mad because my, my mom was like, because I was making my mom wait, but she was watching the show and we, me and my mom had had, because I wanted that like cross-generational conversation with her about the scene and the Duke and I and get her thoughts. So my mom was reading the books with me and I was pissed because she was like, I know who Lady Whistledown is. And I was like, you shouldn't. What? Like, because she watched the episode before I did. And so oh. I was like upset at first. 
But now I'm thinking on screen, it might be interesting to have that as a viewer, we have that knowledge and like, it's probably gonna be fun to watch that. We'll see. Yeah. And they did take creative liberties because there was things in season one that was like not in the book whatsoever. Like Anthony's affair with that opera yeah, girl. Opera girl. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I love that part. Well, and they brought a lot of things early, like I think through like book five, they've had things in season one, like up to book five. Philip, right? Yeah, I was about to say yeah. we didn't even Philip know Philip was a character until like forever, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so yeah. oh, are I we gonna get that in season two? We might what get that in season two. We might get Philip and like we might get that. I, I was wondering that, but we know what happens to Marina. So, like, mm -hmm. what is that gonna happen in the show? Probably season two. Because why are you, because writing wise, then I'm just going to get upset. Because writing wise, why would you spend so much time on that storyline, okay, and then introduce the setup, and then you're not going to carry that out in season two, which is going to be sad to watch. But it would be interesting to see how they depict it so that we can get that hurt locker and touchstone for, like, our romance later. Right. But, yeah. Yeah, I'm interested. Um, oh, a mafia yeah. series in adaption. Hmm. Ooh, BL. I feel like that would be a good se TV series, not a good movie, a good TV series. Mm -hmm. Oh, Sophie Larks. I would like to see her Kingmakers on screen. Are you kidding me? Like a mafia Hogwarts? But see, then it's like, can we really do this because of J? But I would love to, I would love to see that. And that's adult, okay? That's adult. They were in college. I'd yeah. like to. Thinking about the bully. I'm going to be quiet. But yeah, just, just hurry up and read the book so we can talk about it all right. <laughs> I'm behind on the series. I will get there. But JT Guy Singer is how you say it. I was watching yeah. Jen talk about that. Guy Singer is how you say the last name. I was, I've been mm -hmm. saying that. That will be really good, too. I'm reading the second book right now. And it's... I love that series. Oh, so good. Yeah. I read the second book first. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> For <laughs> JT Guy Singer? Yeah. I read the second book first. And I was like, you really, really know what's it. going on. But we're just going to keep going. <laughs> I love that series. Me too. Mm. Oh, this and is she has a lot of series that blend into each other too. Yeah, I love her whole world, and all of them are on like yeah. there's a lot of KU hey, and read and listen. Like they're really oh. digestible. It would be a great them. TV series. Um, I'm pretty sure Julia Quinn said she didn't know who Lady Whistledown was when she started writing. So <laughs> the show oh. is allowed to like take liberty since like they know everything going right. into there. Priest, oh. Sweet baby, Jesus. <laughs> I don't think I can see that on the TV. <laughs> I don't think that will ever get approved. I would die though. I would literally pass away. Yeah. Yeah. I that don't need to read that series. <laughs> Christy, yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> She's very I, like hit and miss for me. Bloodied me. Like I could cry thinking about that series of how much I love it. Sierra <laughs> Simone. Yeah, Sierra Simone. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I still need to read it too. But I mean, her. I love her. I love her words. They linger with me. So yeah. Did you I finish do. that um novella of hers last night? Yeah. Okay, sure me too. It was good. <laughs> I love the Robin Hood aspect. Oh, I just started it an hour ago. I'm so excited. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was fun. It was fun. I didn't realize it blended into her um new Camelot Cat series. Yeah. 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 Oh, I haven't read that series yet. Yeah. The first one, you know, there's some great quotes in that book. Um, that's what I'll say. But, uh, <laughs> oh my God, Fallen oh, Man. I, I would, would love that. Literally die. <laughs> I would just, I would just be dead if this. And happened. Gianna would be so fun. Like, they, they, she would be so fun to work with. Like, you know, like consulting and help. Like, that would be so cool. She'd yeah. make sure that thing goes, oh, I would love that. See a ruin. ruin. Would I would be have amazing. Yes. Dude, you guys are like, oh, that's a good idea. 
Where are these Netflix people or HBO? I know, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. Ooh, bring you the money. <sighs> <sighs> they need to start doing that. Bringing in readers for like, think, I'll go to a think tank session. This is what you should be doing. Right. Or like, you know, or the, just because if you had somebody that was a reader on, on the team, then they'd be able to tell you like why certain scenes are pivotal, you know, right. for emotional development. Yeah. Like, because it seems hey, like they're in their own little world of like, they don't realize what's happening out here. And like, there's all these great books and choices you could pick from. <laughs> like, there's a whole other world. <laughs> there's more. Right. Gadgets and gizmos of plenty. Just like there's a whole treasure <laughs> trove. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> oh, <God. Stay> <laughs> Oh, this God. is super super good yes um i don't know if you could do her enthralled books because those are a little oh yeah dark hbo no they can't do it <laughs> I mean, well, they that's like, like, five so yeah sometimes like i think of pam godwin series and i'm like you know what i think steve ruin would be perfect because part of the reason why I like indie published authors is because I know that I will never get some of these stories on the screen and they can really take it there and say mm -hmm. what we would be censored to see. And so that's like part of my joy. Of a There's lot of indie too published many authors. trigger warnings though. I don't think that one would get picked. And then the ending, I, my favorite thing ever, but it's, I don't see like someone picking that up. Sierra, or, um, it's a Sherwood. Oh, Sherwood. Sure what was yeah. that? Was that just a bunch of authors that released? Yeah, and they're like uh, free. You could just grab them on their link. Yeah. 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 They're yeah. not and an anthology. Just they're just like a bunch of books that authors yeah. put out for free. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just Katie because. Roberts is one of them. One of her mm -hmm. um Olympic Olympic series is in there as well. I liked that too, Stone and Heart. Yeah. Me too. I love that one. Yeah. I love the cleaning lady. Okay. Yes. Yes, girl. Because it's set in Vegas and I'm trying to be like themed because I'm a whole for a theme. And um, so, yeah, I like the cleaning lady because she witnesses like she witnesses a murder and they hear her and she offers to clean it up. And then she starts working for this mafia group. And I like, Ooh. are we going to get that on, romance? Like, what's, what's that on? Yeah, I've never uh, heard of that. Like, I think it's network television. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, like hmm. Fox or something. But like, I like that like he's clearly attracted to her and she's like, I'm just here to clean. And I'm like, yeah, but could we be here for something else? So <laughs> we yeah. can clean up after. <laughs> I know <we're> <laughs> <laughs> Oh wait, you know what good series would be? Like the Wolf Song series by TJ Klune. Yes. Oh my God, that'd be so good. My heart would die, I would die. The amount of times they're remaking movies that don't need to be remade is a oh. <laughs> I know. Like how many Ghostbusters do we need now? Yeah. <laughs> I know. I just saw another one for like Jurassic Park. I'm like, get out of here. I don't want. I this. think that's the last one for Jurassic Park. Yeah. <laughs> Was it six Jurassic Park six? And I'm gonna be right there with the Raptors. I keep I. You know what? They get you while you're young, right? Yeah, I, yep. I like Jurassic Park, so I'm excited for the new movie. <laughs> Me yeah, too. I'm like ties them all together <laughs> me too i'm like well i'm going you know they should stop making these but I, you have my money <laughs> oh my god i saw batman that last night and the preview came on and i was like boo <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> it ends with us i need it's to read movie. oh that book it is, is so good i just movie? read it mm -hmm. oh okay this is true though i'm really actually excited about the original that's Captain. why i'm excited yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, I am excited for the Buzz Lightyear movie. I am excited for the Buzz Lightyear movie. I didn't know there was Buzz a Lightyear movie. Oh. movie. With yeah. Chris Evans, yes. The what? thing is, it's people like us that like are finally in the industry. They want to remake their favorite. I really think right. that that's it. And they know that it's the bankable kids. movies. That the 90s kids are like, oh yeah, we need to reboot this, you know? But when they do it like the craft, I was so excited about that. And then they remade the craft and I'm like, you ruined it. I just don't like when they ruin it. Yeah. Like, just make it better. Or just yeah. give me like another sequel that we don't need. I'd rather that. Yeah, like the He's All That or whatever spinoff that they did. That was so bad. <laughs> I didn't watch that. I didn't watch it. Okay, do we want to talk about our next book? Yes. Okay, did you already read it? I did. Oh my gosh. People have said they don't like it, so I'm nervous. <gasps> no. I like it. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Rain Night in Shining Armor by Drew Devereaux. I almost lost my copy because I had it out for my March TBR and then I had no idea where I put it, but I found it. So um, it's time travel though, right? Yes. I think so. Yeah. Which I don't know. Our last kind of time travel romance was a, a lot. So. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like this one does what that one should have done. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. <gasps> from that one. Okay. Because this says, is it? It has some great quotes. So, yeah. Does it all take place in 1980s or does she go back? Okay. Yeah. I was worried when I saw that. Christy's the vault with every book. You read so much. Yes. I love it. <laughs> and I love how you won't spoil it, but you tell me what I need to know. And then exactly. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> it is a knight in shining armor. Yeah, I Which would I grab mine, shelf. but my bookshelves will 100% fall on me if I try to find that. <laughs> you really yeah, need I, to those, but... I know, I know. And when are you guys mm -hmm. um, announcing your next books, like, the rest of the year? Um, I think, so we do it in, like, batches of three. So, mm -hmm. okay. um, I think after this one, we'll announce the oh, next okay. three. We haven't picked them yet, okay. though, so... Okay. I need we to haven't picked them. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, because we have through June chosen. Yeah. Which I'm really excited for our next three, too. Because we have a Joanna yeah, Lindsay, a Lorraine Heath, and then Annie's song, which I know a lot of people have been reading Annie's song. That yeah, because there's another big clip. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, Jen and Crystal read that. Yeah. Which I actually have a I'm really excited for Lorraine Heath. Me, too. That's a great series. I love her. I loved that interview. It was so fun. I was fangirling like the entire time. You should have seen your face was like, you were like, I was like, see, you're so excited right now. I was yeah. excited, excited. Yeah. I love her. And She's when so her audio wasn't working at first, I was like, no. Because you were so excited about it. And I was like, I need yeah. to hear her talk. I know. Oh, I was so but she was she just so face. like, just down to yeah. earth. And yeah. Just, like, yeah. You're crazy. iconic. Do you understand how iconic? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't think she realizes it, but it's okay. We love her. It's the ones with the greatest song. talent that don't. They're like, I, or I don't want the kingdom, but you're the one. It's just always like that. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, we've been on here for over an hour now, so we will wrap everything up. But thank you, Tiffany and Christy, for joining. If you ever want to join again, just let us know. We had a blast. Especially with fun. how crazy this was. I don't know if we'll get another crazy one for a while. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> They're always a wild ride. Thank you for having me. I had so much fun. This is so yeah, much thank fun. you. Make sure you follow both Tiffany and Chrissy. I link them both down below. Chrissy's on Instagram. Tiffany's now on YouTube. So give them both a follow. Chrissy, would you ever do a YouTube? I don't know. Like, I feel like I could talk a lot about it. But like editing, I wouldn't want to oh, deal okay. with <laughs> because <laughs> okay. i love following you on instagram like, you'd be so good oh, on youtube thank you. your page is gorgeous i love your reviews it's everything thank you. <laughs> yeah. okay thank you everybody for joining and we'll see you next time bye, bye.